I never thought I'd say this, but the PC I'm building today is rocking both an Intel CPU and Intel GPU. Now make no mistake, even before we do this, I can't imagine this will be an ultimate price to performance PC or anything. We've already seen that the Intel Arc B580 is in fact some of the very best value you can get for gaming right now, but you can't say the same thing about their CPUs, at least not their newest generation. This here is the Core Ultra 5 245K, and it's the cheapest option available in this new generation, but it still comes in at a whopping $279. That's nowhere close to the cheapest option of Ryzen's AM4 CPUs or even AM5. To be fair though, for an all Intel based gaming PC, which was the main goal of today's video, I certainly could have gone with a previous gen 12400F and got an amazing price to performance, but for the sake of science and wanting to daily drive next gen parts myself, I went with the 245K. This is a 14 total core CPU with six performance and eight efficiency cores. And if you didn't already see, Intel basically scrapped the whole hyper threading thing, so we're no longer dealing with that. This has a 5.2 gigahertz max turbo frequency, and we'll see soon in the benchmarking section what it's truly capable of. Before that though, a quick word from today's sponsor. Corsair, and specifically their new K70 Core TKL keyboards. They have both a wired and wireless version here, and they're about the same except for connectivity and the included wrist rest with the wireless version. Now, I'm gonna cut to the chase here. This keyboard has several features that they want me to show off, such as the multi-functional rotary dial, gaming performance mode, and the IQ customization, but what I I think they absolutely nailed is the sound. These are second gen MLX red switches and I did a typing test on my previous live stream and you can see here the kind of ratings that people were giving the sound out of 10. I personally don't think Corsair has ever made a gaming keyboard sound this clean, creamy, and brain itch satisfying. The two layers of sound dampening material are definitely getting the job done and if you wanna check out these boards for yourself, I'll have them linked down in the description. Getting back to our build, I'm plugging the 245K into the ASRock Z890 Pro RS Wi-Fi motherboard and if you're not up to speed, I actually build all of these PCs over on my Twitch live streams, which is always linked down in the description. This Z890 was the cheapest all white motherboard that I could find. And at the time of filming, Z890 is the only chipset available for this new CPU series, but eventually we'll see more affordable options. Next up is the RAM. And here I'm kind of done experimenting as this is just the Silicon Power Zenith 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30. I've used this plenty of times already and usually don't have too many issues. Although I have been starting to see some motherboard incompatibility problems with this kit, so do your research before buying. For the SSD, here's a bit of a curveball, as it's the MSI Spadium M450, which I usually don't purchase, but when it dropped on sale over on Newegg down to 50 bucks, it was a no-brainer. This $50 price tag has usually been reserved for the cheapest possible options, and this M40 is just a step above that. The 3600 over 3000 megabit per second read and write speeds aren't breaking any records or anything, but it's still plenty fast enough for a $1,000 system. We're also sticking with MSI for the power supply, and this is the MSI Mag A650B, yeah, tier C, non-modular, and enough wattage is all I really need, and this unit for $60 satisfies all of those requirements. Feel free to step up to a tier B model if you want something a bit better, and that tier list is always linked on my zttbuildhelp.com website, along with a ton of other really valuable and completely free resources. For the extensions, I tried to make this as Intel as possible, so I went with this Asia Horse light blue kit. I know Intel isn't really using this light blue color anymore with their branding, but I still think this is screaming Intel, and they look really nice regardless. What also looks nice is this Sama Neview 4361 case paired with these YE1203 Unifan knockoffs. This combo gives off that same signature Infinity fan design that the much more expensive Lee and Lee's use. And even without the extra fans up at the top, the 4361 is pretty solid for only $59. I did try to install one of those fans on the CPU cooler though. It's the Thermalright Assassin King 120 SE ARGB by the way, but the metal brackets sometimes don't line up when you try to do this and I couldn't get it to work with this combination. I usually hate hate mix matching different ARGB styles in a build, but this one still looks pretty good, especially considering we're trying to keep this reasonably affordable. And finally, the last part is of course, the brand new Intel Arc B580. And the only reason I have one is because I pre-ordered it the second they became available and I probably got a little lucky. So many YouTubers have already tested this out and proved that it's the king of value right now, especially towards that 1080p ultra to 1440p high level. And with 12 gigabytes of VRAM at this $250 price point, it's hard to complain about honestly anything.
bag. I should not have said that. Go figure, it's out of stock absolutely everywhere. From what I've seen and what other people are saying, the drivers have been pretty stable so far. There's very minimal quirkiness involved, if at all, and Intel is successfully becoming beginner PC gamer friendly. However, in the middle of producing this video, there have been several concerning videos about the B580 that I'm sure most of you have seen so far. It was originally uncovered by the Hardware Connects team that the B580 now has some serious performance issues when paired with a budget CPU. During the initial reviews, almost everybody paired the B580 with the 9800X3D since it's the king of gaming, and it outperformed the RTX 4060 like Intel was claiming in a lot of titles. However, we now know that when you pair the B580 with a budget CPU like the i5-9600K or even the more respectable Ryzen 5 5600, the performance suffers and ends up losing to the RTX 4060. This has so far mostly been seen in CPU demanding titles, but it's definitely important to know about if you're thinking about picking up a B580. Granted, you can even get your hands on one. I don't have enough time to fully test this myself against the 4060 in this video, but I would assume we're not going to have an issue with the 245K since that's still a pretty powerful CPU and it's brand new. Before we jump into those gaming benchmarks though, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and I managed to keep this just a touch over the $1,000 target price point. Sorry for the back-to-back -back $1,000 builds on the channel, by the way. I usually like to mix up the price ranges a bit, but I wanted to get this all Intel built out as soon as possible, and there's only a couple of price ranges that even make sense for the ARC B580. While we're talking about that, the other price point that does make sense would be around the $750 to $850 range, and that's if you go with a Ryzen CPU like the Ryzen 7500F. You could keep the parts list in this build completely the same except for the 7500F and a budget AM5 B650 motherboard, and you'd be rocking some much better value. This build has almost $500 for just the CPU and motherboard combined, and with the 7500F, you'd be around half of that, which is crazy. But let's run some benchmarks with the hardware that we do have, and honestly, I got a pretty good report from Sam on this one. He did say that we got a small amount of stuttering in some titles, like here with Delta Force. The 160 FPS in 1080p high settings looks and feels great, but that 1% low at 35 FPS isn't exactly ideal. Same thing with Once Human, because again, in 1080p with high settings, the 100 FPS is perfectly fine, but the 36 1% low is a little weak. But honestly, both these games are relatively new titles, and it's understandable that they aren't perfectly optimized for both the new Intel CPUs and GPUs just yet. For the most part though, everything else ran pretty well. Here's Helldivers 2 in 1080p high getting 91 FPS, Cyberpunk in 1080p Ultra got 95 FPS using the built-in benchmark, and even Black Myth looks great at 87 FPS, but we did dial the settings down to medium for that one. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and just like we were all hoping and expecting, the Intel Arc B580 definitely delivered because this is some great performance for a $250 graphics card in 2025. Honestly, I'm very happy with how this all Intel build turned out, but I am definitely not done with it. I'm actually going to be taking this PC home with me now to daily drive it for a while, at least until I build my brand new 9800X3D and RTX 50 series build whenever I get my hands on that, but I really want to explore the ins and outs of daily use with both this new Intel CPU and GPU series, and I'll be for sure making a follow-up video on that, most likely on YouTube Shorts though, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. But yeah, if you're looking for another way to build a $1,000 PC, then feel free to check out the video that I just uploaded last week.